I have tried hundreds of nootropics in the quest to cure my ADHD. Some have worked, others have failed, except nine compounds have stood the test of time. They helped me go from 70s in high school to 90s in university, and they've absolutely changed my life for the better. A nootropic is a compound that affects one or multiple aspects of cognitive performance, whether that's memory recall, processing speed, task switching. This is the best memorization, racetam, and honestly, nootropic. It is so good. I find with school that sometimes I'll try to remember something, except it won't be very sticky and I just won't remember it, whether that's for lack of ability or lack of interest, except I find pramaracetam fixes this in that information is just a lot more sticky that I can just read PowerPoints and remember them perfectly afterwards. It affects the high choline affinity uptake system based on just increasing the usage of acetylcholine in that area, resulting in increased memorization and memory consolidation, as well as it increases CBF, cerebral blood flow, by increasing vasodilation, the opposite of vasoconstriction. It is regularly prescribed in Europe for treatments of learning disorders, neurodegenerative diseases, dyslexia, ADHD, so it is a fairly safe compound to take. And my experience of it is just great. Like it is really good for school where it just really turns on the memorization aspect of my brain where I can just review notes before a test and recall them during the test pretty good. Like probably 80 to 90% of the way there. The con with it is that if you open the doors to neuroplasticity or memorization, you can reinforce the good, except you can also reinforce the bad. So it's something to be aware of. So say you take pramiracetam and you eat like a bag of chips or something like that. Afterwards, that bag of chips is going to stay a lot more in your memory and you're probably going to have cravings towards it just because you ate it during a time of enhanced neuroplasticity, so it's gonna stay with you more. This also applies to conversations with friends or confrontations with enemies or anything like that. An endogenous steroid precursor to cortisol, testosterone, and estrogen. It is androgenic at low doses around five milligrams and estrogenic at higher doses around 10 milligrams and upwards. Honestly, one of the best ROI nootropics that you can try. It increases androgens, so testosterone and DHT, helping effort to feel good and more rewarding. Step aside anterior and mid cingulate cortex. The striatum is the goal epicenter of the brain which is why you see all the motivating compounds increase dopamine in this brain region because it's very important for goal intention it affects the sigma 1 receptors which are very important for cell signaling as well as it is the body's natural sigma 1 agonist which downstream increases dopaminergic activity. This is a weird compound that is very polarizing where some people find it sedating and it puts them to bed. Other people find it stimulating and it energizes their days. So it does very much depend on the person. For me, I notice it is very motivating. I do take it when I need a little boost, when I am studying, when I am editing, when I'm having a very physically intensive day. Honestly, like just between me and you, like it drastically increases my libido, which is honestly kind of a bad thing because I would never take it for a date or anything like that because it makes me anxious. So I'd always take it just when I'm doing work. But if I'm doing work, I'm working by myself like in a cubicle or something like that. And it's honestly kind of counterproductive to be very horny when you're writing like a 10 page paper. So it doesn't always work the best for that. As well as it is a pheromone precursor, so it can help increase pheromones to attract ladies if you catch my drift. Methylene blue is a dye synthesized in 1896, originally used as a medication, then a tank cleaner, and now a nootropic. It is one of the best ROI compounds out there where it is very cheap and it is very effective. Just stay within the normal dosage range. Usually when people go out of that, that's when bad things can happen. Probably good to be cautious where I don't combine it with other serotonergic compounds because it is a reversible monoamine oxidize A inhibitor. with fairly potent effects. It increases mitochondria function, which increases brain function and the opposite decreases brain function, where you want effective mitochondria to have a ready supply of brain energy. And it's thought by Dr. Chris Palmer 
that dysfunctional mitochondria is at the root cause of a lot of psychiatric conditions. It enhances immune system function and is actually the parent drug to hydroxychloroquine, which if you were alive in the past few years, you know that was a very coveted drug during those times because it helped improve clinical outcomes for people. I found it stimulating, a little bit mood boosting, in higher doses, it definitely did increase anxiety a little bit. And it's also very good for memory and just your mental sharpness. And that can all be tied to its mitochondria promoting effect. Maybe just my end of one experience, except I noticed my logical thinking was a little bit better. Like my mental math was a little bit better. Tongue was blue as well. Rhodiola rosea is an aptogenic herb commonly grown in tough conditions so it can help your body deal with tough conditions hence the name adaptogen you know it's included in every popular formula ever from alpha brain to mind lab pro to quality of mind for good reason because it is so versatile it is a reversible monoamine oxidized a and b inhibitor mainly increasing levels of serotonin norepinephrine and dopamine as well as it increases endorphins which are your body's natural opiates which you commonly get after a run, hence the runner's high. And it is a powerful antioxidant in its own right. I find it energizing where it just turns on a switch for my sympathetic nervous system and increases my heart rate, increases my energy, and increases my enthusiasm about life a little bit, you know, and that's why it's called the nap in a pill. Verbal fluency is commonly tied to energy levels where if you increase your energy, you will increase your fluency just because you have more mental resources to devote to the task at hand. I find rhodiola greatly increases my verbal fluency for this reason. Meg 10, magnesium L3 and 8, chylated with thuronic acid, which is a vitamin C metabolite allowing it to cross a blood-brain barrier. And it is because of this that it can give powerful anxiolytic and cognitive enhancing effects for most people. It is kind of a designer magnesium, except it can be worth it. I don't think it's the best for a magnesium deficiency because it doesn't really give you a good supply of elemental magnesium to fit your daily value, except it's really good for cognitive function, like it really is. You know, magnesium is such a vital mineral where it's so important for so many things and particularly memories where it is crucial to the physical cellular process of memory encoding itself. As well, because it is an NMDA antagonist, it is neuroprotective because it can help stop the destruction and overstimulation of cells I've tried a bunch of different forms of magnesiums. I've tried them all besides magnesium l which I will try soon. And honestly, it is the best for improving short-term memory recall. It's really good for that, thankfully. And it's just even better for connecting ideas or taking a complex subject matter, really concising it and making it simple to understand. It's really good for that. The only thing about it is that I notice it lowers my emotional tone a little bit giving me more affect. So I wouldn't really take it in social situations. Try acetyl uridine, which is a more bioavailable form of uridine, which is a nuclear tide. Very important for RNA. You most likely already consume some uridine in your diet if you regularly drink beer. So a few milligrams more isn't going to hurt. Usually dose at 25 milligrams. Fairly affordable, it doesn't cause cancer, and if you're curious about this, you can read this comment on Reddit that kind of explains it a bit more thoroughly. It is an integral part of the Mr. Happy Stack, which is a combination of uridine, choline, and fish oil, or DHA, which increases the synthesis of neuronal membranes, which is pro-cognitive, as well as it upregulates the dopamine D2 receptor and increases NGF due to an interaction with the P2Y2 receptor. It is a strange compound in that it's very holistic where after a few days of taking uridine I just notice I have a more intrinsic desire to do things that I should do like eat healthier go for runs I find it easier to say no to the cookie but yes to the gym and this is probably from the dopamine upregulation effect. I've always noticed this with uridine. It's one of the few compounds I find increases working memory, which is a good proxy for IQ. Nicotine, everyone's favorite alkaloid, which is honestly the best over-the-counter cognitive enhancer that everyone can access. It can be addictive just due to enhancing plasticity as well as to giving you strong acute effects, so it's very rewarding. It is an alpha-7 nicotinic receptor agonist, 
which downstream increases norepinephrine release in the prefrontal cortex, which just feels nice and is pro-cognitive. One of the few compounds that shows a measurable increase of IQ, where they test people before and they test people after, and they notice a significant difference after consuming nicotine. One of Andrew Huberman's professor friends takes six pieces of nicotine gum an hour just because it can ward off cognitive decline by activating an anti-inflammatory pathway and upregulating alpha-7 nicotinic receptors. It has a dose-dependent response which low doses increase cognition, high doses decrease cognition which is going to vary for everybody. I am very sensitive to it so I take like one-eighth a piece of nicotine gum. It strongly increases memory recall and working memory, which you can test by your ability to remember a sequence of numbers after being quickly exposed to it. Oxyrastam, one of the OG smart drugs, which has been around for 50 plus years with a fair amount of studies on it, showing that high doses are safe, so it is a good compound to look into. It is a mild, atypical stimulant acting as an apokin, so mainly targeted around glutaminergic transmission. It increases verbal fluency in the elderly, which is a good proxy for IQ, along with working memory, cue recognition, and processing speed. It is an ampapam, increases ATP and cerebral circulation, and all of those actions are pro-cognitive. I find it is great for memory encoding, where it is essential to my studying sessions because it gives me more energy and I retain more information afterwards, and it makes studying a little bit more enjoyable. So I always take it, it's really good for school. I also always use it before I record these videos because I find it helps increase verbal fluency and my ability to put together sentences, as well as I find it's really good for sports or physical movements where my technique is just better without me doing anything. And I notice my fluid IQ, AKA my working memory is a little bit better where I can solve problems easier, I can think about solutions quicker, I can connect ideas faster. Dopamine is such a triggering buzzword with multiple people feeling like they have low dopamine for whatever reason, fortunately, you can upregulate your dopamine and you can enhance your baseline levels of dopamine in a holistic way. You can do this with Kana, which is surprisingly very effective for it. <laughs>